Hey guys, Mel the Train Shooter back in the studio and back with another Let's Make for you. Now in this Let's Make we're going to be looking at the sort of standard stereotypical doormat hayfields but I'm going to be putting Mel's little twist onto it to take them beyond that simple little slab you throw down and to take them to the next level and really improve your tables. So with that in mind, yeah, hold on to your hats, get your crafting gear in order and let's head over to the bench. Come on! Okay guys, for making our hay fields, what we're going to be going for is sort of the tried and tested material for all hay fields, yeah, since time immemorial. People have been using doormats, yeah, to create hay fields since, since I was a babby. Now quite typically what they do is they'll cut a square off it and they'll just simply lay a square down. Now sometimes they sort of step it up and what they'll do is they'll cut a chunk out of it so you can take it out and put troops hiding into it. Some scenic guys, they like to build, put it on a base and then build a little wall around it, you know, with a gate and everything. And sort of increase it, you know, how it looks as a scenic piece. Yeah. Now I've always had a problem with these square pieces of, uh, of hay fields because, I mean, growing up in England and growing up around, you know, where there's hay fields, they go on forever. They're not little square patches. And so what I want to do in this video is sort of show you a different technique, yeah? And by creating hay fields that are table edges, yeah, that sort of transition in on from a table edge, and in doing so, give you the impression that that table is, that hay field is continuing long into the distance. Yeah, now I'm going to be do, doing this by a couple of table edge pieces and a couple of scatter pieces. And I'm going to do the scatter pieces containing little hay bales. Okay, the idea being that it's a great way of continuing and breaking up the edge of the actual hay. So you don't end up with this square. Now the first thing that we need to do is to get it cut. So what we need to do is we need some EVC bases. Yeah, so I'm using EPVC. Yeah, you can use MDF. We've got videos on basing and this sort of stuff, but this is my recommended stuff. Yeah, there's a video on it in the basing at the start of the Let's Plays, yeah? Next thing I need to do is to get everything measured up and to get our pieces cut. So, I'm going to crack on with that now. I'll see you in a sec. Okay guys, when it comes to actually cutting your, your doormat, yeah, you need to work on it from the other side. It's a lot easier to cut this side because this is where it's all held together, not this side. You'll have a nightmare trying to cut through this side. Yeah, second thing you're going to need is a decent knife, something heavy duty because these come with quite a thick backing. Yeah, don't try and cut it in one go, just take it, do it in a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I need to get a circle out of this. So I'm just going to very quickly draw around the rough shape. And if you notice, it's sort of overhanging a bit. That's because I need a bit of a lip and I don't want to waste material. So if I bring this up like that, yeah, I know that if I bring this, because that's the edge, I need to bring it back a bit and I need to bring it round like that. Sort of round, take this corner off. Yeah, and then bring it up here. Yeah, once again, round again. Yeah, and curve that off there. Yeah, so that's my shape. Next thing I need to do is to start cutting. So I get my blade nice and easy, and the idea is I do nice little gentle cuts and slowly work through them, cutting deeper. See what I mean? Yeah, obviously watch your fingers. This can take a little bit of pressure, so, you know, take your time with it, guys. Right, I'm gonna carry on cutting this out and we'll bring it back once it's cut. So we've worked our way around and it was a bit fiddly to be perfectly honest, but it's ready for sort of separating now. So if I give this a bit of a pull, and away it comes. And lo and behold, there you have, there's your little field patch. Right, next job is, let's get these stuck down, eh? So guys, I've got my table edger and I've got my scatter piece and it's time to glue them down to the EPVC, yeah? Now, because it's got a rubberized bottom and because of this is sort of plastic, PVA doesn't really work. You've got a couple of options. You can go for super glue, you can go for something like no more nails, yeah, but for quick and easy, I'm going for the hot glue. Yeah, but like I say, if you haven't got a hot glue gun, you know, a bit of no more nails or super glue will do perfectly fine. And all I want to do is very quickly just stick it down and get it gripped. I'm going to be doing the edges anyway later when I go around and, and sort of blend it in. So I'm not too worried about the edges. Yeah. So wax some hot glue down. Yeah. A little bit of that. 
get my piece and because it's a table edger I have to make sure I line it up perfectly yeah, otherwise it'd be silly and then press that down and when it dries, fingers crossed it's on your base and it's as simple as that right, I'm going to do that with that one yeah, and then we'll be ready to start putting in the edges here, okay? right, let's crack on Okay, once they're all glued down, it's time to actually blend in these edges. And if you have a look at it, you can see how you've got this edge, which is the, the, the rubber mat, the basing. And we need that to disappear. And to do that, what I've been using is I've been using a bit of air drying clay, a bit of Das Putty. Yeah. And what I've done is I've rolled it into a little sausage and I've just smoothed it out. Now, this is dead simple. This is Das. Okay. You can use Millie Put for this. I've also seen people use things like acrylic filler. Yeah, you want to avoid normal filler with this job because the hairs on this tend to suck it in and it makes it an absolute nightmare of a clean up job. So avoid normal filler and you're better off going with a putty to blend your edges. Now in this case what I've done is I've rolled out a bit of a snake, it's about 5 mil wide yeah, of DAS modelling putty and all I'm going to do, dead simple, is I'm going to come along, yeah, I'm going to lay it right next to my, watch to my edge. Yeah, and then I'm just going to start pressing it in with my finger. Yeah, just like that. And if I bring it up, yeah, let me come in this way so you can see what I'm doing. I am literally just squeezing it in and flatten it out. And what that'll do is it'll just continue that bevel and blend that edge in so no one can see it. So that when we come along, we put a bit of PVA and grit on here. Yeah, it's all going to just disappear. You know what I mean? Right, I'll crack on with this and we'll come back when it's done. Okay guys, they are and that's all blended in. And once that's been graveled up, etc., you won't be able to tell. That's even there. It'll look perfect. Okay? Now obviously this is air drying clay. It's gonna need, you know, about 12 hours to dry out that thin. Yeah, so I can't put my PVA. I don't I could, but I don't really want to put my PVA and grit on just yet. So we're gonna put these to one side. Yeah, and then we're gonna crack on with doing the haystacks. Now when it comes to the haystacks. Yeah, we're going for sort of not manufactured ones, but the old sort of ones they used to like put together. And typically what they do is they do a pile of hay, they then get a big stick and stick it in the middle, and then they throw hay on top, yeah, and the stick would, would essentially hold it. Yeah, and so they're the sort of ones I'm going to do specifically for this piece. Okay, but all across Europe and all across the world, you know, there's been different ways of stacking hay. The important thing is you get your substructure right, once you've got your substructure right, then you stick on your hay effects. Yeah. Now, when you come in to do substructures, I'm using this, which is Das Modeling Putty. Okay, which will work for what I want to do. Uh, you can use, you can carve and sand foam into the right shape. You can make substructures from cardboard. It doesn't really matter as long as it's sturdy enough and roughly has the shape. You know what I mean? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of roll a few of these out. Yeah, whack them onto here as little lumps okay and then put some cocktail sticks in and we'll come back and show you once I've got those done guys okay okay guys that's the substructures done and let me just bring them up very quickly it's just air drying clay yeah like I say you can use all different things for your substructure you just need something dead cheap simple to get the basic shape of whatever sort of hay bale or whatever you're doing Okay, now as you can see, I've stuck cocktail sticks in. These are going to be the little wooden sticks out the top. I will trim these down, but for the time being, they're actually going to be quite useful to actually hold the pieces while we spray them and do and paint them and do all those sort of things. So, with regards to this, we've pretty much got to lay, lay, leave all of this to dry now. We've got our scatter pieces here, yeah, that we'll be putting our hay bales on. We've got our fields here which need to dry before we grit them up and do all that sort of stuff. So we're going to let these dry now and we'll come back in just a second, which will probably be about 24 hours. Yeah, and we'll carry it on. Yeah, see you in a sec. OK, guys, now we've got our sort of hay bale substructures done. What we need to do is get ready to actually put the coating on. Yeah, and now to replicate our hay, what we're using is coconut fibre. Now, this is a, what you, a plant liner. You can buy them in most sort of general hardware stores and it's just coconut fiber that's been meshed up into a liner and the idea is that you put earth in here and watch your plants and your water and that sort of stuff and it's to stop all the earth and that sort of stuff running out now for us we're not really bothered about earth running out what we want to do is pull bits off like that 
yeah and this stuff is really good for substructures for trees and all sorts you know you can manipulate it in all sorts of different ways but what I want to do is pull away most of the large ones yeah clean my piece I want to grab it roughly like that yeah I'm just going to start trimming yeah and what this will do is it will give us lots and lots of little fibers yeah that will then be able to stick onto our hay bales okay and we will use that to replicate like the sort of piled hay and the hay on the ground so I'm just going to crack on with this yeah and when I'm done we'll, we'll get it stuck on yeah see you in a sec okay guys all our air drying clay is dried now and if I bring that up to the camera you can see that's worked perfectly we've hidden the, the base of the mat okay and our little haystacks yeah, they're perfectly dry and they're ready for taking to the next stage. Now, there's a couple of things that we need to do. Yeah, obviously I need to get these all textured. The next thing I need to do is get these base coated and I want to do something on this first. Now, if you buy really good mats, which I did, I think I nicked one from home <laughs> before it got laid down. What you get is you get quite a, a very manufactured edge and it's a sharp edge. Okay, and it's perfectly fine, but if you want to spend an extra sort of 10 minutes on the piece, yeah, what you can do is you can, you can come in and you can just trim these edges. Now, when you trim them, yeah, save the bits that are falling off. So I'm going to scrape these off my desk in a second. But if I bring that back up now, yeah, it sort of changed it from that really straight edge to a more raggedy edge. Obviously, if you buy the cheap mats, that's not a problem. Yeah. Now, so... I'm going to crack on, I'm going to do that. Now, I'm also going, yeah, to grit up our bases. Now, we've got our big base, this base, we've got this base, and I've swapped out a couple of these for a couple of smaller 6 mil, 60 mil, 3 mil MDF bases. Okay, I've just beveled these down. So I can go for three hay steeps, hay, hay stacks, hay steeps, hay stacks on that one, and two on those, yeah? So we're gonna grit these up, and the other thing that I'm gonna do very quickly, yeah, and I'll bring this back, is this. Yeah, these need base coating before we take them to the next stage and we hay them up. Now, when it comes to base coating them, you want a dark yellow. I've got a couple options. I can go for a simple yellow ochre, which will be perfectly fine. Yeah, you could darken it up with a little bit of brown and make it a little bit more mustardy, yeah? And you've also got Army Paint Primer, you know, and this is their Arak Sand Yellow, I think it is. Desert Yellow. What's Arak Sand Yellow? I think that's what's one of the Vallejo colours. Yeah, but you want that sort of mustard colour. So I'm going to give those, uh, I'm probably going with the Army Paint a quick and easy. Give those a quick spray. Yeah, and then I'll be back once I've got these gritted, trimmed, and these base coated for the more interesting stuff. So, see you shortly, guys. Right guys, the bases are all gritted up now, okay? The haystacks are drying, so I just wanna get a bit of brown on these. I haven't sealed them yet, so what I'm gonna do is, I've got a little PVA on my plate already from gritting them up. That's still a bit wet. I'm gonna mix it in with a bit of brown, a bit more of that. Yeah, and then give these a base coat, okay? So, dead easy, simple, it's no different than when you base coat. All you gotta remember when you, if, if you're working with grit that hasn't been sealed yet, is when you wet it, don't re-go over the area, yeah? Because when you wet it, uh, the PVA will reactivate and it'll all be loose again. So, dead simple, you know? Put your paint on, work it around. Make sure you get up to the edge and you cover those white bits of any exposed clay, yeah? Or whatever you've used to sort of join the areas. Right, I'm gonna crack on with this. I'll see you shortly, guys. Okay guys, we've got our pieces drying over here now, yeah? And we've got our little sprayed uh, haystacks here. Now I've also just taken a moment, used that brown, and just painted the sticks as well. Yeah, I'll explain why as we go along. Well, it's a stick in it, yeah? Next job is we need to get our coconut fibre that we've pre-prepared, yeah? And then get it stuck onto there. Now, if you haven't got uh, sort of plant lighteners or anything like that, remember that your house mats are made out of coconut fiber as well. So you can come along, you can trim, you know, you can use electric trimmers and shave them, you know, to get your, your basic fiber. But we need to stick it on. And PVA is not the option in this case. You really need something a lot more tacky. So tacky glue, uh, you could go with something like Copydex at a push. 
Things from like Hobby Tack, yeah, which is a stay tacky, what you call it, latex glue from Woodland Fe Scenics is good. Yeah, I'm going to be using a bit of Blue Tack Fast Tack, which is once again a stay tacky adhesive. The reason why it's a benefit being stay tacky is because it's quite clumpy. If you start using like liquid glues, it can get a bit messy, etc. So, what I'm going to do is quickly, I'm going to spray one of these quickly to show you, and then I'm going to crack on. So, I'm going to spray it quick and then I'll be back. Right, that's all sprayed up now. Yeah, and it's time to start coating. So, we've got a chop fibre here. Yeah, and I'm just going to start at the bottom and start layering it up. Yeah, so working it round, just like that. Just like that. Yeah. The reason I haven't clipped these yet is dead simple. Yeah. So I can hold it without getting my fingers all sticky. Because if I touch that, they're going to get all sticky. And all I'm doing is literally just building it up in layers. Yeah, I'm pressing against it. Yeah, just like that. Start at the bottom, work your way to the top, and once you've got to the top, yeah, I'm kind of rushing this one for the video. I really shouldn't, should I? It won't turn out, you'll have a bad time, Mel. Right, oh, missed a bit. See, that's because I'm rushing it for the video. Yeah, yeah have we got it? Oh, yeah. And if I bring that up to the camera, yeah, there's our little haystack. Now I'll leave that to sort of dry, yeah, touch up any spots, do the rest. I'll clip the top, yeah, and paint that so we get our stick sticking out the top. But there we go, guys. Yeah, so I'll crack on with these. Once they're dry, we'll glue them on, we'll do the final flocking, and we are almost done. See you shortly, guys. Okay, guys, these are all dry now, and if I bring them up, you can see, you know, we've got an earth texture on it. Yeah, and I am giving it a solid base coat because I like the variation in colour. It's, it's quite earthy, if you know what I mean. Right, next job we need to do is, obviously, these have been done, this has been done, you know, our large piece has been done. Our hay bales are all ready to glue down, ready for the ceiling. Yeah, not our hay bales, our haystacks. I've been struggling with that whole video, haven't I? So, next job is, before we glue the hay down, yeah, we need to do, we need to flock it. So, we're going to flock these, these, this, and this. Yeah, and to do that, yeah, what we'll do is, we'll start off with just a little base, just because it's easier. Yeah. Okay, so, I've got my base here. I've left a gap in the middle, yeah, because that's where I want to glue my hay bale down, and I don't really need grit there. Yeah, the next job is, I've got a bit of PVA on this plate. I've watered it down just a tiny bit, and all I'm going to do is give it a quick coating and then sprinkle some PVA on. And then sprinkle some, not some PVA on, we're going to sprinkle some flock on. Yeah, so, quick coating on that. Right, and then it's time to do the flocking. Now, I want this to be relatively light. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use two types of flock. First one I'm going to do is this really light one from Jarvis. Yeah, their Premier range. And I'm just going to cause some hot spotting. So, just like that, okay? And then the next one I'm gonna do is, oh, I've gotta open the tub. Just my standard green. Yeah, so. Yeah, give it a good coat. Grip it in the middle, because I know I am glued there. Yeah, spin it round just to get those edges. And then, We'll give it a quick blow. Said the actress to the bishop. There you go, guys. That's done now. Next job we've got to do is, I've got to finish off doing exactly the same on this, on this, on the edges of these, you know, on the edges of this piece. And then when it's dry, we'll be ready to finish off, add our haystacks, and then seal it all up. So I'm going to crack on with this, and I'll see you shortly. Okay guys, these are pretty much dry. They're dry enough for us to continue to work on. Okay, and the next job is basically sort of adding the hay bales onto these and also garnishing up the bases a little and getting them ready for sealing. So, dead simple with the hay bales. Remember we have the cocktail sticks in them? Yeah, the cocktail sticks are perfect for holding them together. You will get loose bits coming off. Yeah, we will trim them when we get to that stage. Okay, so well, once we've sealed them, so all I'm going to do is nice blob of PVA there, get my hay bale, just 
drop it down. Yeah, and that's all there is to it. Now, on top of that, what I'm also going to be doing is I'll put a couple of hay bales on this one here with these pieces. Yeah. Yeah, we just need to break up this edge. Now, obviously, we've got a, a bit of flock on various bits. We clean that up after it's all sealed and everything's held down. We can just come along with a, a pair of clippers and just clean that up. But what I've got here is I've got some army painted jungle tufts because they're quite nice and light. Yeah, and then I've got some random bits, yeah, off where I savaged a foreground tree. And I'll use that just to just to break up the green a bit. Putting them on, the tufts are self-adhesive, so they're going to go straight on. These, I'm just going to dip them in a little bit of PVA and drop them straight on. So I'll show you once we've got them all done and when we're ready to seal. Yeah, guys, so I'll crack on with that. I'll see you shortly. And there we have it, we've clumped up and put our turfs on and it makes a massive, massive difference. It's looking a lot better now. And we've done that across the board, I've put a couple on there, there's some on the larger piece. And our next job is to seal it up. Now before we seal it, there is one little job that I want to do. Okay, now over here, I've got the, the remnants of my chopped uh, coconut fibre, now I think this actually came off the actual when I was ragging the edges of the mat rather than when I was working on the the watch call it, working on the actual coconut fibre uh, card inlay but what I'm doing is I'm just giving it a little sprinkle around here because obviously if this is fresh cut hay yeah there'd be bits of hay that has dropped out and the idea is when we seal it th this will capture these bits up, I don't really need to do it that much on these because the pieces sort of carry far enough, you know, the, the hay sort of explodes enough over the base, but just on this one. Now, when it comes to sealing, yeah, typically, yeah, we're going to use water, watered down PVA. Now, this is my PVA sealant. Okay, ignore the label at the minute because it's got Baker Ross in. It's running at about one part PVA to about eight parts water. Yeah, but essentially, you want to get it looking like watered down milk. There's numbers of different ways of applying it. I, I particularly like, you know, using my airbrush when I'm working on a big project, that sort of thing. Obviously, you don't need an airbrush to apply PVA. You can use a squirty bottle. You can use, yeah, pipettes. You can use a syringe. You can even use a brush. You've just got to be careful about re about soaking the flock. It becomes loose and then sort of dislodging it with your brush. So if you're using the brush, work on an area, then move across. Now, quite specifically, because these are, are quite sort of bumpy and full, yeah, I don't want to use a brush on them, yeah, it'll disturb them. So, I've picked up a little 50p makeup squirter from Sainsbury's, you know, one of our local superstores. Yeah, it squirts okay. And all I'm going to do is give the whole thing a bit of a soaking with it. And the way I'm working is I want to go until it looks like I can see, like, a whiteness to it, if you know what I mean. You can see on the camera, you can just see sort of a whiteness in areas where the, where the glue's pooling together. That's perfectly fine. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give these all a good soak. Yeah, and then we'll come back once I've done that. Yeah, and I'll show them you then and then we'll leave them dry. So, I'll see you shortly guys. I've got some squirting do. So here we have it guys, they're all dry now. Now obviously, you know, the, the ground covering is very basic, it's very stylized. All you've got to do is do that to match your table and, and your models. But we're not finished with them yet, even though they're sealed. They've still got a couple of little jobs to do to finish off. Now, with regards to the ceiling, if I bring these up, yeah, yeah, they're pretty well stuck down, but they're not solid. Okay, now this is perfectly fine for like personal play, your own terrain sets with you and your mates and that sort of stuff. If these are going to a club or a shop environment, I would probably hit them with another uh, dose of PVA and what you call it, sort of really set them up or hit them with a matte varnish. Now the last thing that we need to do very quickly is a bit of a haircut. Obviously we've got a few, ow, long strands. <laughs> Don't poke yourself with a cocktail stick, eh? Yeah, all I'm going to do is just come along with my clippers, yeah, and just trim off a few of the, the sort of larger ones, yeah, without sort of trashing it, just makes it look a little bit nicer, yeah, so I'm going to do this, yeah, all you got to do is just look for, for where they're sticking out and where they're a bit too long and just trim it down, yeah, right, I'll do that and we'll come back once that's done. So guys, there you have it, 
We've given them a bit of a trim and they're looking much nicer now. Now there is one final thing. The sort of mounting stick that they build the hay bales around, not the hay bales. I've been calling them different things all the, all the video, haven't I? Basically, all we're going to do is come along, yeah, trim that off and you get a little bit of wood at the top. And then very quickly, yeah, a bit of the brown paint that we use to actually do the base and everything with. We only need a tiny dot on this. Yeah, brush. And if I bring the paint up, you can see it there. I'm using my trousers to wipe my brush on. Case is going to kill me. <laughs> Again, I used it to wipe my hot glue gun on. <laughs> right, and then just we're just dabbing that on there, just to hide that bit of exposed wood. There you are, and it's done. And that's it. That's our hay bales done. Right, let me get set up for the long shot, guys. So there we have it guys, isn't that a load better than just like a little square of doormat thrown on the table? With this technique, using the table edges, using the scatter pieces, using the scatter haystacks, you can create a rolling landscape of a hayfield, rolling in from the table edge. The scatter pieces mean that you can place your models behind them, get them in cover, you know, for those support positions without having to place your models on top of hayfields or cutting chunks out, squares out. You know, you can... You can fence it all off around the side and create a, 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 a true sort of countryside environment on one side of your table or both sides of your table, depending on how much you're going to savage your doormat, you know. And we're covering fences and walls at the minute. So that's it. Dead easy technique. Just remember, if you buy really nice doormats, you're going to have to rag them up a bit because they don't look quite right because they're a bit too sharp. Yeah, and remember, it's easy to do, guys. So do it. Now obviously like it if you like it, share it if you know someone who wants to do this. If you've got any questions about the techniques and need something clear enough, get them in the comments guys. If you've got something you want to add to this video, you know, something you do, share it in the comments guys. And as always, yeah, if you really like these videos, if you find them entertaining or if they help you with your hobby, yeah, consider coming on board to be a patron. We're in the middle of doing a fundraiser now, right now to get live days, yeah, a regular live day once a week in the studio yet, yeah, where I'm basically chatting with you guys live and troubleshooting your terrain problems and at the same time working on making terrain tutorials. In fact, if you'd like to see how these were sort of made in the whole process, just go back and have a look over the last couple of live days and you can see me putting them together. This whole tutorial was filmed live and it took quite a while, which is one of the reasons why, you know, I ask for your support. So, if you want to help make this more regular, bring more tutorials, help me, help yourself with more tutorials, help the whole community, then please consider pledging on Patreon. I only ask a dollar. Yeah, if you want to pledge more, you're very welcome. Remember, there's Patreon discounts coming up, and if you're not into the one dollar, if you're not into the sort of rolling monthly thing, and you just want to say a quick one-off thank you, there's a link in pay to PayPal down below, yeah? So send a couple of quid, a digital pint, or a poor pie. Because I like poor pies, be it PayPal, it's all appreciated. Remember, yeah? you will end up on the wall. We are laser cutting your names and you will end up on the wall. So guys, thanks for your support. I genuinely couldn't do this, yeah? You patrons are one in a hundred subscribers. You are one in thousands of viewers, but you're special to me, yeah? So I'm gonna sign off because I'm starting to ramble. More vids like these coming soon, guys. Catch you soon, yeah? ta -da.